posterior shoulder dislocation. The usual story is the patient visits the emergency room and the patient comes back to see the doctor because he has constant shoulder pain and the patient is not able to move the shoulder. When we examine the patient, the patient will have limitation of external rotation of the shoulder. You may be shown an x-ray, an AP view of the shoulder, and the interpretation will be normal. It will appear normal. You need to get two x-ray views, orthogonal views, an AP view and an axillary view. An AP view alone will not diagnose posterior shoulder dislocation. When you have a posterior dislocation of the shoulder, the AP X-ray view will show the classic light bulb humeral head due to internal rotation of the shoulder. The axillary view will show dislocation of the shoulder posteriorly. It is the best view to show the posterior shoulder dislocation. After reduction, always get that view and check concentric reduction. In the axillary view, locate the coracoid and outline it. The coracoid is anteriorly. Then look for the acromion. The acromion is posteriorly. Locate the glenoid and see where the head is going to. Is it going posteriorly? Will be a posterior dislocation. Is it going anteriorly? It will be anterior dislocation. In posterior dislocation of the shoulder, in the axillary view, the head will be going posteriorly, away from the coracoid and in the direction of the acromion. With the posterior shoulder dislocation, the shoulder is locked in internal rotation position with prominence of the posterior shoulder and there will be prominence of the coracoid process and anterior flattening of the shoulder. Posterior shoulder dislocation may be associated with fracture of the lesser tuberosity. 50% of posterior shoulder dislocation will have a reverse Hillsex lesion or impaction fracture next to the lesser tuberosity. When you examine the patient and you see limitation of the range of motion, especially the external rotation of the shoulder, you may think it's an adhesive capsulitis or frozen shoulder. Frozen shoulder can start by limiting the external rotation. However, it is usually a global restriction of the range of motion. Posterior dislocation of the shoulder is rare. It's about 5% and it is usually stable after reduction if no fracture is present. Posterior dislocation of the shoulder usually occurs after seizures or electric shock. Why a dislocation of the shoulder most commonly is posterior in seizures and electric shock? That is a controversial subject. Some people believe that the shoulder internal rotator muscles the pectoralis major, latissimus dorsi, and subscapularis are stronger than the external rotator muscles. Up to 50% of posterior dislocation of the shoulder can go undiagnosed when the patient is examined in the emergency room, especially if the dislocation results from seizures. And if you find that the patient has posterior dislocation of the shoulder from seizures, the patient should be examined carefully and a neurology consult should be done to control the patient's seizures. Any future treatment of posterior dislocation of the shoulder may fail due to lack of controlling the seizures. Treatment, you will do close reduction of the dislocation. Close reduction is not difficult in the acute setting and can be done up to three months. Instability is rare 
with absence of fracture. Immobilize the arm in neutral rotation with the elbow at the side and posterior to the plane of the body. Impaction less than 20%, do close reduction and immobilize in external rotation. Open reduction is done when the posterior dislocation is chronic or locked. We usually use the delta pectoral approach to the shoulder. If the defect is between 20 to 40 percent, you will transport the lesser tuberosity or the subscapularis tendon into the defect. More than 45 percent defect or if the dislocation is more than six months, do arthroplasty and place the prosthesis in less retroversion. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.